Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. So today I am, you know, yesterday I talked about a lot about the masculine and feminine dynamic and how to create more safety for women in the, in the collective. This is a topic that I have so much more to say about. So I thought, okay, I'm going to make a whole other podcast about it today because I have been sharing about this a lot on my Instagram and so many of you are saying really amazing things and it's activating a lot of conversations. And I just realized I have so much to say about this because this is something I get really nerdy about. Like I feel this is a topic that everyone else is kind of not really talking about like head on, like facing, hey, how do we heal the masculine and feminine dynamic? How do we look at it in a way where we honor what has happened in the past between men and women and we process it, (laughs) you know, collectively in our bodies, individually, and then we release it and we build something new and beautiful. Through my journey of, so we're going to talk about this more today. So through my journey of somatic experiencing and lots of therapy and, you know, there's mental therapy, which is in your um, (laughs) psychiatric is what they call it, like your, it's mental cognitive processing. But, you know, 20% of our processing that we experience actually happens in our head in this timeline and 80% happens in our body. So (laughs) we are actually need to process a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about between men and women. We need to process it on a body level. And this is what somatic experiencing is. This is the sensations that are happening in your body. This is the energy that moves through your body. And when something traumatic happens individually or collectively, the energy can get stuck in your body if you're not able to process it on a somatic level, on a body sensation level, in a way where you're able to feel the thing, learn what you need to learn, honor it, and release it with love. So I'm going to bring up some more of this stuff that we can look at collectively, and I invite you to look at it also individually in your, li- in your life and see how it plays out. Because it, when you look at this and you allow it to process in your body in a way where you're honoring it and releasing it, this is healing, not just for you, but also for the collective, right? So like, this is what we're here for. Some of the stuff that I might share right now, you might not agree with. Some of it might be triggering for you. That's okay. Like, Take what you need and leave the rest. That's what I always say. And if you are here listening to this video or watching this video or listening to this podcast, you you are meant to be here for some reason, whether it's to activate you to agree to it and change, to process it, to disagree, whatever it is, it's an activation. So I invite you to allow this activation in and to enjoy the journey. So last night, um, I don't know what's going on in the field on a spiritual level, but me and a lot of my close soul family are having a very hard time sleeping, Verity included. Uh, the last couple of days, we're just like, staying and it's not it's like it's like (laughs) the best way I can describe it is uh, I uh, hold on disclaimer not that I really care but I'm not promoting um taking psychedelics because I don't take them right now but in the past when I have and I've had a really enjoy yeah words a really yummy MDMA journey and I felt super connected to everything or even a really good acid trip LSD trip, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there's this moment when like my body is like, it's time to go to sleep. And then my psyche is like, no, no, no. We're still understanding everything in the universe. We're still like connected to the oneness where we're still getting the downloads. This is how it's been feeling in my body soberly for the last couple nights as I go to bed. And like I said, it's been happening. I've been checking in with some soul family around the world who are also super tapped in and connected, very highly connected to source, and they're all feeling the same way. So I feel we're all getting the downloads, and the one that has been coming through for me is, you know, healing this this dynamic between men and women, healing the masculine and feminine energies within ourselves and within each other, uh, so internally and externally. And I'm just going to share with you. My, I, I opened my phone and wrote down a bunch of notes last night. So I'm going to share with you them and then I'll talk about it. Um, 
so a dynamic that I see playing out a lot right now in the collective, like so the collective is like mass consciousness. Um, but I feel this is being played out subconsciously in a lot of ways. Like people are not aware on a like a general accepted knowingness level that this is happening. And because they're not aware of it, they're not able to process it. It's just like this. Like it, when the reason why we say doing shadow work, so shadow work is when you allow like belief systems that are no longer serving you, some people call them negative beliefs, to come to the surface. These are ones that have been hidden inside of you, like in your subconscious. So some part of you at some point in time decided, oh, I'm afraid of this thing because a bad thing happened, right? So I'm going to create a belief system that, for instance, in the past, I was allergic to mangoes randomly uh, when I was 14. And so suddenly, um, mangoes were bad. I had a belief system that mangoes were bad. I carried this belief system for 10 years until I came to Thailand. So I, and I tried it every once in a while. And, you know, I still would get a huge reaction on my face. It would be really itchy. I would have to take um, antihistamine and like sleep for the rest of the day. It was not fun. Um, and then I got to Thailand, and mangoes are everywhere here. Mangoes are in everything. I love, I, you know, the thing is, I used to love mangoes, so uh, I would eat them all the time, and I really enjoy mangoes. And then I talked to some girlfriends here, and they were like, yeah, you know, I used to be allergic to mangoes, and then I just <laughs> decided that I wasn't going to be allergic to them anymore. Uh, this one girlfriend, and she was like, yeah, someone was saying that... Um, if you if you get the mango in your mouth without it touching the outside of your lips, because um, it's usually the I'm going very deep in the story, but the point is, there was something going on that was making it allergic if you got it on your face, like the sap from the tree on the outside of the mango. And so she was like, I've just been like putting a fork and putting it in my mouth, and I'm not allergic. And I was like, I'm gonna try that. And then I was not allergic to mangoes anymore. So. <laughs> I had created this belief that mangoes were bad, they were scary, they caused negative things in my life. This was a belief that I chose that was no longer serving me. <laughs> Once you start understanding quantum physics and you start understanding the structure of reality, you realize that you can actually do this about everything. Just going to plant that seed there. Uh, but most people cannot hold this in their consciousness because they think that their whole world's going to fall apart if they realize that everything is actually very malleable in our 3D reality and it's projected from our consciousness, starting from our belief system. Whew, okay, just going to leave that there. Come back to the story. So if this is pl if these belief systems are playing now in our... So the shadow... Oh, I'm backtracking. So shadow work is bringing up to the surface belief systems and asking yourself, do I still want to believe this anymore? Is this serving me? Or do I want to just like let this go? That's what shadow work is. So it's like looking, getting to the root of your belief systems around subjects. So we're going to look at, do some shadow work today. This is what we're doing about the masculine and feminine energies in the collective. This is like mass consciousness collective, how it's playing out and how it affects you individually. So... <coughs> Uh, so what I have seen um, in my own personal lived experience, also doing a lot of uh, doing a lot of coaching around men and women and the way they, they interact with each other, you know, relationship coaching, sexuality coaching, hosting play parties where I'm literally receiving over and over again from men and women their personal stories. So when, when you host play parties, sex parties, people tell you things about their insecurities around connecting to the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever. Their connection to sexuality, their connection to all of these dynamics because they're trying to heal this. And so I end up receiving a lot of this and I'm happy to receive this because for me this is, my, this is part of my work that I'm doing for the collective. This is the service that I'm here for. I'm here for all of it. Let's go. Let's heal all of it, right? And so this is what I've been seeing. Um, again, I don't know why I'm putting a disclaimer, but I want, I, I'm just, I really invite you to hear the whole thing out before, like, so if you're a man listening to this, I invite you to hear it all out because I'm here for all of it. I'm here to heal all of it, but we have to look at it. And this is not shaming anyone. This is, everyone is amazing. We're all doing the best we can. Let's look at this. This goes for men and women and all 
all genders, non-binary, everything. But we're specifically looking at heterosexual dynamics between, I mean, okay, we're not actually looking at romantic dynamics. Mostly this is kind of like in general how men and women have interacted with each other, whether it's romantic or not. But I would say that this goes way deeper in a heterosexual romantic relationship because people are all up in each other's business. They're literally having sex. They're making babies together. So they're like creating, like sharing a life together. So this like goes on a way deeper level. So we're going to talk about this first. So what I have noticed as in general mass consciousness, we're going to go general and then we'll go specific, right? I have, I have experienced that most men have the emotional maturity of either a child or an early teenager. So we're talking about emotional maturity. We're talking about access to speaking their emotions, tools to how to regulate their emotions when they get overwhelmed, to stay present with, present with themselves and be able to allow the energy to move through their body be able to have the emotional awareness of what's happening with other people around them and tuning in and accommodating and co-creating a situation emotionally with other people. If you look at children, they want to play. If you look at early teenagers, they start wanting to <laughs> do all this. I'm just going to go in my notes. So some of this I've noticed is because they didn't have, like men haven't had a safe space or given the tools to feel their feelings. So I've talked about this in other podcasts, but it's like, again, I'm not shaming men. A lot of this is just like what has been happening in the collective because a lot of times when men have felt their feelings, when they have cried growing up, they get shamed for it. Like, hey, men don't cry. Hey, you're not allowed to have feelings or you're weak. You know, like a lot of men grow up with this very lived experience whenever they have shared emotions that they need to man up, which is literally like, don't feel your feelings or don't express your feelings externally, right? So they shut them down. When you, this is, this is a form of trauma. This is a form of trauma. Not being able to feel your feelings, feeling alone when something bad happens. This and trauma, all trauma is, is, well, it's a couple things, but the one thing I want to talk about right now is it's energy getting stuck in your body. So you're feeling this feeling and then you're not allowed, you're not feeling safe or you're not allowed to honor it. Let it move, let the energy move through your body, learn from it and go move on in your life, right? There's also something else that happens. Um, it's called a psyche, your psyche. So like your actual personality construct that you have created from the soul level when you come in your psyche can split so what does that mean it's um so say for a man if he was five years old and he starts crying because this is a normal thing that humans do when they're sad uh and his parents are like stop crying man up men like boys don't do this you're weak da 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 that five-year-old part of himself that was alone in that experience that felt shamed for that can split off from the par the rest of his conscious personality. So he can put literally put that part of himself that feels the version of himself that feels safe to feel his feelings and express them away in a box in his psyche. And then he just shuts down. And he says, okay, I don't feel... This is what I have to do in order to be accepted by my tribe, by my family, by my community, by my friends. So I'm going to man up and I'm going to be tough. So that five-year-old part of him, that is where the emotional maturity gets stuck. Because when you're not allowed to feel your feelings and grow in how you regulate your feelings, like it's okay to get upset. What happens when we get upset? Okay, here's some tools and how we can calm ourselves down. Here's some tools and how we can stay in our power and look at the situation and still feel our feelings. But what happens is they start reacting to the, t to the, the toolkit that was given to them at five years old, which was don't react. Don't show emotions. Don't, don't be externally expressive of your feelings. And this is what they carry. So there's something in psychology called internal family systems. It's IFS. I also really invite you to Google this on YouTube and look at some of this because this is bringing these parts of yourself back in. And there's also um, inner child work. So you can Google 
or search on YouTube, inner child meditations. There's tons of them. Some of them have like millions of views. You just listen to them. It's five minutes long. I really, really, really recommend inner, inner child meditations because this brings back like in an inner child meditation you usually like they have one I really like where you're like visualize yourself walking on the beach and this little child and and like it's like meditative music playing it's really cute and then like imagine a a child walking up to you this is your this is your inner child and your inner child has some things to say to you what does it need to say and then you like imagine what it is and so for instance in this illustration I just gave in this example this five-year-old part of this man could say to him, I needed to cry. I needed to feel safe to cry. Why wasn't I allowed to feel safe? That's not fair. And then you in the meditation, as the adult version of yourself, can give yourself that comfort, can give yourself that understanding, can say, it's okay. Yeah, I'm here for you. That wasn't okay that that happened. And we're, we're doing this together now. I protect you. You're okay to feel your feelings. It's safe now. And then you merge your inner child. Like it's like you imagine your inner child and you hugging and then your inner child merges into you. And this is bringing this part of you back into your psyche. So like the whole point of somatic therapy is bringing all of these parts of you back in. So one of the biggest things about waking up, becoming an awakened soul in the timeline, yes, the first part is understanding the structure of reality, but the second part is bringing yourself home in your body, bringing all of this home so that when you are experiencing this beautiful game that is the timeline and that is the life that we've chosen, you're able to experience it as a whole sovereign being. Um, Because what happens is when you get triggered, so say this man that I'm talking about gets triggered, he, this five-year-old part of himself is the one who's reacting to an emotional situation. It's not the adult version of himself because he wasn't allowed to grow emotionally. He grew physically. He might have grown spiritually. He might have grown sexually because he was having, he was allowed to have all these experiences. But when he wasn't allowed to have the experiences of literally feeling his emotions and understanding what it's like to feel his emotions and feeling safe, that just stops. So the growth of the emotional reality just stops. And then, of course, you're going to feel overwhelmed when you're an adult and you're facing adult emotional situations and you have the toolkit and the, 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 the emotional reality of a five-year-old. Like, of course, you're going to shut down and start freaking out and like throw a tantrum. This is what I see a lot happening in the world today. This is what I see a lot in the collective is men just emotionally having the toolkit of like children or maybe early teenagers, right? And just feeling really overwhelmed on how to handle life and just shutting down a lot. And I mean, this was like my ex-boyfriend. I had an ex-boyfriend that was like classic example of this. And I know he told me the trauma that he had. And I know exactly like, oh, I'm dating the emotional reality of a 12-year-old. Okay, he's doing the best he can. He's trying to show up but I need, I need a man. I don't need a 12 year old. I, I, you know, like, it's like, I need, I want to experience this with a, I want to have all these experiences with the grown up version of him. <sighs> Let's take, take a deep breath on that one. That's one part of why I feel like the, a lot of men have, are stuck in this early childhood emotional reality, um, or like childhood, early teens. Um, the other part, the part that might like be triggering for some people is that like, that's, there's two things. There's the, so that is like where some men might, like women might feel like, oh, I want to help them, you know, like I want to help them. And they go into this role of like, almost like a mom role or like a teacher role of like, hey, I can teach you these tools of emotional reality. Hey, this is, it's safe to feel your feelings. And that's great if that is your excitement. But I will say that this is, this is, (laughs) this is men's work. This is men's job to start, like we as women, we, we did this. We went through the experience we went through the tool I when I left my religion and left my marriage I I got a therapist I went to group therapy I 
I read, I, I minored in psychology in university. So like I already knew a lot of this baseline, but like I, I was like reading everything I can get my hands on. I did the work, you know, I did. And when I got to Copenhagen, I learned about shadow work. Oh my God, I did so much shadow work. And I, it's an ongoing story. I'm still doing shadow work. Not, I'm not saying I'm fully healed. I'm just saying that it is not women's job to heal this in men. And I'm speaking to you women who are listening to this. It is not sexy. The polarity, the polarity is the attraction, you know, between the energies can go very off in a negative way if a woman is hosting the emotional reality too much for the man in, in a relationship. If the woman feels like a mom, if she's holding too much of the emotional you know, part of the teamwork, if she's holding too much of it, it's not going to work. And this is what happens in a lot of relationships where women are like, wow, it's great. I can teach him a little bit. And then like six months later, they're like, oh my God, I'm tired. Uh, you know, a year later, they're like, I get this fucking dude out of my house. Like I'm so <laughs> just I'm speaking from personal experience. Anyways, um, uh, I've had to learn that a lot about like meeting a man where he's actually at right now emotionally. And what I've realized pretty hardcore is how much um, having someone, having a man have the emotional tools and the emotional capacity to meet me in a certain range you know, there's like a certain standard, like it has to be above this range where we can actually play the game together emotionally. I really need to honor that and face that and like make sure that I'm getting that in a relationship. And I really invite all of you women to have this standard for yourself. And it can be different for everyone. But for me, being Scorpio, sun and moon, I really, really, really love talking about emotions. And I love being able to express them with my partner and like dive deep about them. And it's not about, it's not in a complaining way. It's like understanding the human experience from an emotional perspective. Like, Ooh, yeah, that one, that one felt deeply. And Oh yeah. How did that person react? And Oh, that's so interesting that that, you know, this, I had this reaction to this other situation and like, Ooh, how does this feel in my body? And like, how am I, feeling emotionally, like all of this stuff. I could go on for hours with my partner talking about this. And it's not even that I need him to be like, oh yeah, I totally agree with you. Like that's what my girlfriends do. Like I don't need him to like even add to the conversation. I just need him to be able to, you know, carry the conversation with me and like ask questions and like understand what I'm talking about. It would be amazing if he was under, like being able to go deep with me. But this is what I mean, the range, because Sometimes we, and I've even had Faraday say this to me, like, um, I'm not one of your girlfriends. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't expect you to, I mean, in the beginning of the relationship, he wanted me to talk about aliens and awake things all the time. And then I realized I don't want to do this all the time. I, I want to talk about my feelings. Like, you know, I want, I'm happy to do this sometimes, but I want to talk about my feelings a lot of times. And he's like, okay, well, just like I don't give you all of my downloads about, you know, aliens and all this stuff. I'm just telling you that like, I'm not going to be able to receive all of the emotional stuff and go and like really get nerdy about this stuff with you because if I did, then maybe I would actually be a woman, you know? So I don't know. I'm still f figuring that one out, but I will say that like, don't expect your partner to be everything because this is also, this is the polarity. We want something different. We want to be able to learn from each other. What you just need is for them to be complementary in the sense that you feel safe. You feel safe to feel your feelings. You feel safe to go deep on whatever is alive in you. And you're both supporting and honoring each other in that, in that journey that you're on. Um, so another reason why I feel like men haven't really necessarily developed a lot of this emotional awareness is because, so just hear me out here. It's because m some of this is because men have run societies for many thousands of years. So they didn't have to learn a lot of this stuff. They didn't have to grow up in certain ways because everything came so easily to them. 
and the energy and the mass consciousness with a lot of this, this is what people consider toxic masculinity, is this energy of like, of the masculine being like, what can I get out of this? Like taking energy, conquering, and I just want to play. I I don't want to deal with any of this other stuff. I just like, you know, this is just surface level. Like we're just going to play and have fun and I'm not going to go into any of my shadows. I'm not going to face any of this. I'm just going to play. Bye. And like not taking responsibility for like what's happening in the collective, the fact that we're all co-creating this together, what's happening, how this is affecting women. Uh, there's even a term for this in psychology. It's called Peter Pan phase. And uh, some some men never grow out of this phase. They just play their whole lives. And uh, I have no judgment of any. Everyone's allowed to do whatever they want. And But I want to speak to how this affects the feminine. So <clears throat> I feel like this is all fine if, like, you know, in, in Never Never Land, all of the boys, first off, they called them the lost boys. Uh, just going to leave that there. But all of them were just m- boys. There was no women there. So they lived in Never Neverland and they played. And that was it. Um, so this is, I feel like this would be fine if these ty- the, like this energy in the masculine was on an earth that was only men. Because then they would just play and they would just not look at anything and not face their stuff and not do shadow work and just be like, I just take whatever I want and I can destroy the earth and, you know, kill people if I don't like them or, you know, just this whatever, whatever, whatever attitude. I'm being very general right now, but I want you to feel into the energy that I'm talking about. Um... So I wrote in my notes, this is fine if they lived alone on the earth, but they don't. And they have historically, using this energy, suppressed the feminine. Because of this suppression and straight up... So, I mean, you know this, that only in the last 150 years have the feminine started to get the right to vote, get right to what happens to their body, like abortion, like what, like, actually, like, you know, and get the right to... uh, have their own business, make their own money. Like this is only in the last 150 years, like since the beginning of the 1900s, maybe late 18. Like, and this is this, and this is in modern societies and many countries, this is not even happening for the feminine. They're still being very suppressed, like in all ways because of this suppression and straight up brainwashing from society and religion that women are somehow weaker or their value is determined by what they can offer the masculine to feed the masculine pleasure. I want to really break this one down. Look at porn. Look at how porn, the main energy around porn is domination of the feminine. And it is the feminine used as objects to serve male pleasure. It is all of this in one one porn video. Everything I just talked about. There is no tapping into what the feminine needs. There is no empowerment of the feminine. And we're talking about 99% of porn. I'm sure there's some very ethical porn. Um, <clears throat> but in general, this is serving the male pleasure. And when I talk about the energy that I just said before, it's like the masculine taking energy and conquering and I'm playing and I'm not seeing how this affects the feminine and even using the feminine in a way where they're just toys in in the objectification of them. This is really important to look at. So I'm not bashing men at all. I'm looking at like what is happening in the collective and how can we shift it for the better? This is the reason why I'm making this video. So because of this, women have created many negative beliefs mentally about their own power. So for instance, for me growing up, like I know on a soul level how powerful I am, but I had to really release for many years so many negative beliefs that were put in me by my religion, by my father, by society, by mass media um, about the fact of like what women's place is in the world. And, you know, are women just objects? Are we only here for how beautiful we are and how we can, you know, pleasure a man physically and, you know, blah, 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 blah. I could go on and on, (laughs) but I'm trying to stay in a very positive energy, right? So, 
Yeah. And, or that, yeah, women's value is determined by what they can offer the masculine to feed the masculine's pleasure, blah, blah, blah. I already said that. So this, so what I want to say is that women, we, we in our own psyches have created many negative beliefs that a lot of us haven't consciously faced yet. So as a woman, no matter how many positive affirmations you put on yourself, I am in my power. I'm amazing. If you have a shadow, which is a subconscious belief that my only value is how much I can serve male pleasure or how beautiful I am and how many, you know, how much attention I can get from the masculine and what the masculine thinks of me. So basically just like, I'm not here because I'm myself. I'm here as a reflection for them. That is a negative belief. We are choosing And if you do not look at this, this is your work as the feminine, the divine feminine to look at the shadows and look at these subconscious beliefs and root them out and ask yourself, do I still want to believe this? And if you don't honor it, learn the lesson and release it, fucking let it go. We have to do the work. We have to do the work. But what the reason why I'm saying is this is because it's not like, (laughs) <laughs> it's not an it's not at all an outside job of like men just coming into our homes and like you know putting us into slavery it's like it's very insidious which means like it's very undercover it gets in through into our belief system and then we disempower ourselves by becoming competitive with other women by not valuing ourselves by not speaking up for ourselves by choosing men that are treating us in a negative way that are emotionally immature that objectify us that want to have sex only in a porn way where they're getting their pleasure met you know like this is our choices and this is our belief systems that's uh, drawing this in and if you have the thing is I just want to put something out there sometimes people have these things where they're like this man came into my life so I must have matched him in a way I must, I must be doing something wrong. This is also a negative belief that women have. Is if a toxic man comes into your life, it is not that you attracted him into your life. It's that your belief system very easily will kick them out if you believe that you are not, that you are not a match for that. Like, I just want to, I, I hope I'm making sense here. I have so many men trying to get into my vortex all the time because of the work that I do, because of who I am in the timeline, because of who I am in my community. I can tell in one second if someone is a toxic masculinity. I can tell in one second if they have taking energy. I just had someone I matched with the other day on Bumble who was like, oh, I saw you're in an open relationship, so what do I get out of this? And, <laughs> and I, I was like, I wrote back, I was like, so are you asking me what can you offer me that my partner doesn't already fulfill? Like, are you, are you really trying to like see like how you can give me even more amazing things and show up for me and like pour your beautiful masculine energy into me? I know this is not what he was doing. He was asking like, what do I get out of this? <laughs> but I was trying to like, you know, teach, teach them. But again, Immediately, I was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. This, the energy is already off. So this is not like Brittany attracted in something negative. So therefore, this is my vibration. No, this is like people are coming in at all levels. And your vibration of what your belief system is and who you think you are is going to easily just let that person go and not think about it twice. And just be like, bye, have a nice life. And maybe speak up for yourself and say, hey, this is, I don't agree with this. This doesn't match my standards of how I view myself, how I view how like women should be treated in the timeline, blah, blah, blah. You can, you can say whatever you want to say. But the, re- the real thing is, is do you value yourself? Do you have a belief system that you are a goddess, that you deserve to be treated with love and care, that you deserve all of the beautiful things and that you deserve to be able to feel your feelings and to be worshipped and to have your pleasure in bed met and like, you know, all I, I can, I've talked about this in so many podcasts, but so we as the feminine have to take accountability for our own belief systems, whether those beliefs got put in us, you know, when we were between zero and seven years old, when our subconscious is like a sponge and we're just absorbing everything around us 
okay, you think my hair looks bad? I guess my hair looks bad. Okay, someone told me I wasn't pretty. I guess I'm not pretty. Like, this is what happens between zero and seven years old, right? You literally are a sponge to whatever belief system. So if society is telling you this is how women should be, my religion was telling me women should just be housewives and serve the men in their lives and don't have any power in the church, don't have any power in general. They're just like there to serve the masculine. Absorb, absorb, absorb. But our work is to face all of this now and ask, my, ask yourself, why do I keep thinking, like w there's, if there's some gap between what you are wanting in your life and what you're actually receiving, it's probably because you have a negative belief that you either don't deserve it or that somehow, yeah, somehow it's usually it goes around somehow I'm not worthy of being treated with respect and love or that there isn't good men out there. Whatever you believe is going to be external, externally reflected. There are amazing, amazing men out there who get it and it feels good in your body all the way through and that worship you for being yourself, for not pleasing them, for, you know, like just not because you're there to like be an object or how much they can get out of you. They're there. There's amazing men who will claim you and in the way of empowerment, in the way of what a divine masculine does, which is how can I show up for you? It is a pleasure. It is like my life's calling to take care of you and give you whatever energy I can in a way that honors my boundaries as the masculine and so that you can unfold into your full power. How can I support you? so that you can unfold and like I just keep imagining like a flower like blooming like ah because when women are given this energy from the masculine without them having the energy of wanting to get anything back the feminine immediately wants to give it back immediately a hundred thousand times fold it's like if men were just stopped trying to run around thinking am I valuable do women worship me how much attention can I get from the feminine if they just stood their ground like mountains and like supported the women in their life that they really love they will get all of that validation it's just this really healthy positive feedback loop that just naturally happens and the energy has just gotten so fucking fucked up right now I just said the fuck <laughs> I just said the f word so many times okay back to my notes so yes, negative belief systems in the feminine that needs to be looked at about their own power, their own place in the world. And then the other side that I see in the feminine is they have experienced abuse and trauma physically, emotionally, sexually, etc. So there's one thing to have a negative belief that you can root out like, okay, I no longer believe this. There's also <laughs> lived experience. So this is like, I have lived in a female body for X amount of years and I have had all of these negative experiences with men. And how do I process that? How do I honor that in a way where, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm like actually being able to be honored in it. And there's so much you can do for this. Um, this is a whole other podcast I can make. But the main thing is you have to be able to really look at it and this is what somatic work does is is like going through your body and asking your body what do you need right now like how can I show up for you and and there's so many things you can do you can do journaling you can do therapy but it's like we have to allow the energy to go through our body and we have you cannot rush your body to feel safe I am not asking you to push yourself to heal your trauma faster than your body is okay with I'm just honoring the fact that we can have all of the positive belief systems in the world, but we still live in a shared experience reality with the masculine where every single day the masculine is doing on average a million billion times more negative things to the feminine than, than going the other way, right? Um, <coughs> so it's like, I can, that's the thing is I don't want to spend a whole podcast talking about that because we just know at least as a feminine we know and if you're in the masculine I invite you to ask your fem your female friends how is it being a woman in the timeline do you feel safe have you had p bad experiences with men and just listen to them if you if every single man who listened to this went and asked one or two of their girlfriends or their partner 
hey, just I want to hear you out. And it's not it's not bringing shame onto them. They don't need to do anything to it's not their fault. It's not the man's fault that this is happening, but it's just so healing for a woman to have the masculine energy say, hey, I'm sorry that happened to you. That's really fucked up. And it's so eye opening for the masculine to realize, oh my God, this happens like all the time. And to women that I love, like these women that are so close in my life, I didn't realize that this happened to them. But it's because you never asked. <laughs> this happens all the time. Like I shared the, some stories in my Insta, my Insta story about this kind of stuff and just shared one example of something that happened to me in the sauna the other day. I had so many m- women reach out and say, oh my God, this thing happened, this thing happened, this guy, you know, like, uh, and I was just like, oh my God, this is like overwhelming. There's so much out there, but it's all happening. It's all coming out right now so that we can heal it. So again, if you go at it from the energy of we are here to face it and heal it because there is a very specific point in the near future where this is not going to happen anymore. And this is what I'm here for. This is why my soul came down right now in the timeline for me to also experience all these things so I can tell you, hey, I understand what it's like. I have been there. I have healed my shit to the best of my ability. It's still going. We're all in this together. But enough where I can step back and have perspective on what's happening and be able to see like collectively, oh, this is playing out over the whole world. And this has been playing out for thousands of years. And now we actually have enough awakened souls in the timeline that we can shift it. Okay, back to my notes. <laughs> um, Um, so, but one thing I want to say is because women have had all of this lived experience of trauma and abuse, um, when trauma happens, there's two things that happen. Either a person can cave into the trauma, and I'll explain what that means in a second, or they can grow. So if you have, like I talked about earlier, the psyche that's splitting off, um, this is the caving in. This is like, okay, I guess I'll just submit because sometimes as a child, you have to in order to survive within your family dynamic, within your society, within your community, within your peer group. Sometimes you have to just be like, okay, or this is what you thought you had to do at the time, right? Because you didn't have any support. So this is the caving, like you cave in, you, you constrict, right? And this is where a part of your psyche splits off. Um, I've had this happen to me in certain ways. And um, so it's interesting because for what I notice in the feminine is that because in general, most women are allowed to feel their feelings, you know, like it's like, oh, women cry a lot. You know, it's kind of this thing. But like we are allowed to process a lot of what's happening emotionally in the moment, which is beautiful. So um, but because we've experienced all of this abuse and stuff like this, like I'll give myself as an example, there's parts of me that just split off and I just like disassociated from myself. And then there's other parts of me that faced it in the moment and I grew. I just kept growing emotionally, spiritually. I stayed very connected to source. I stayed connected to my feelings, my body. I was like, okay, we're keep going. We keep like, I'm like dancing right now. I'm like, we're keep going. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. So, um, so what, so then what happens is if you have both of these in one woman, so this was me, uh, you end up having the emotional reality of being part of you being a traumatized little girl. So this is the psyche part, the part of splits of my psyche that weren't able to move on with me as I grew up and they just got stuck. Um, and, and then the other parts of you that were allowed to grow, so the other parts of me that did grow and learn and kept going and I'm like dancing my way through life, um, they start having the emotional reality of like a wise old woman. And I imagine like, you know, those like old Italian ladies. I don't know if you've ever been to Italy, but if you go to like a small town in Italy, there's always these old Italian ladies that like sit on their front cafes and they just like smoking a cigarette, drinking an espresso. And you can just tell they've like seen some shit. Like, I don't know, maybe their family is the mafia or whatever, but they have been through a lot. And like, you would not mess with these women. (laughs) And that's how I feel a lot of times inside. Like, I'm just like, 
Like I did a human design reading for someone the other day and she was like, when you speak, I feel like you have the experiences of what like a 70 year old person would have. And I was like, I feel that (laughs) because in a lot of ways from an emotional reality and a lived experience, I have been through so many things in my life. Like one day someone myself or someone else will write a book or make a movie about my life and that's great. But my point is that it can be very confusing when parts of you are showing up as a traumatized child and parts of me is showing up as like an old lady. And a lot of times that can be like within the same conversation or the same day. And this is why internal family systems is a really great thing. I invite you to look that up on YouTube. Um, so collect, so let's go back to like collectively what's playing out between masculine and feminine energy. So collectively you have the masculine where a lot of them are in the emotional reality of children or early teenagers trying to date traumatize. So we're talking about the emotional reality of a lot of women who, I would say most women are like one or the other. Like I happen to be something in the middle uh, because my my soul wanted to experience all of it. But um, what I see is this emotional reality of like males that are like children, teenagers, either choosing to date a trauma, the emotional reality of a traumatized little girl or the emotional reality of like kind of like this badass but bitter, tired old lady (laughs) emotionally. Uh, even if in the physical years, like the man and the woman are the same age. So even if you're both 25 years old or 30 years old or 40 years old, this, this emotional reality, this energy can still play out where like the guy is emotionally like a child and the woman is either like also a traumatized child or it's just this like bitter old lady who is just like, get the fuck out of my face, you know? Um, Because most men don't want to face this wise old woman (laughs) slash bitter woman. A lot of times they're bitter. Um, They, a lot of times they don't want to face this like from a psychological and emotional perspective because it it means that they need to face their own collective shadow. So, and a lot also, so it's like a lot of men don't, like I can't tell you how many times I've asked peers, like guys my own age or older, and I see them dating, like I see a lot of my friends are like in their late thirties, early forties and they're dating 22 year olds, like 25 year old women. And I'm like asking them, have you ever, like just straight up, like we're friends, right? So I'm, I'm just asking them like a question. I'm like, have you ever dated what you would consider a woman? Like, have you ever dated the emotional reality of a woman? And they, they would say, no, I know. I don't think I have. And what I realize is because they inside are this traumatized boy and it's scary for them. They actually are in fear of dating a mature woman, emotionally mature woman. doesn't matter how, how old she is because they have to fa- they have to grow up <laughs> emotionally in order to meet her there. And also they have to face, you know, a lot of this collective stuff that's happening. And so, and then I think, What I noticed too, I'm just going to speak to this. I haven't fully like figured this out in my psyche, but what I noticed is a lot of these men, like the only mature woman that they have probably experienced in their life is their mother. They, even if they do become friends with this woman or date her, they project a lot of their mother trauma, if they do have mother trauma, onto this, this mature woman. And again, this mature woman, I'm talking about emotionally. So this can be a 25 year old, 30 year old lady, but like they, it's almost, then this is where these women end up trying to teach them, Hey, you can grow up emotionally. It's safe to feel your feelings. And they do energetically go into a mom role, which again is not sexy. In the end, they end up not wanting to sleep with the guy because they feel like a mom energetically. The other reason why a lot of these men don't normally want to, date like an actual woman (laughs) like a mature emotionally mature woman um i would say that if you're emotionally mature woman in this timeline you have a lot of trauma and abuse that you've experienced um because this is just what's playing out collectively um and because a lot of this trauma has played out in our bodies um another reason why men don't want to date a lot of these women is because a lot of these women have lost their spark 
just straight up. They've lost their spark in life. They've forgotten how to play. They're tired. And I feel you, (laughs) you know, like I've gone through moments of this over the years where I'm just like, fuck this world. Like, fuck, uh, fuck men. I hate everything. And then you have to like bring it back in, go on a little soul journey, maybe a little walkabout, go on an event for me. That's going on an adventure. If you ever see me traveling alone, um, I'm going back to reconnect to my child, my inner child and play. This is me for me. Traveling is like the, my biggest form of play. And um, this is also on the feminine. It is not our job, it's not men's job to make us sparkly. This is our connection to our pleasure. This is our connection to, yeah, just n- being alive and loving life and the magic that is unfolding in the world and you know what really helps me is to imagine the divine masculine in myself and like no matter what is being reflected to me externally by the masculine I have this in myself and he's always watching out for me because all of us have masculine and feminine energy it also is helpful that I had a really amazing DMT journey my first ever one I did I've had a a couple amazing DMT journeys, but the first one I ever did, I saw this masculine energy and it was just like the most safe I have ever felt. And it was just like this big mountain of a man and he was just standing. I was like laying, I had laid down and I was crying and I was releasing a lot of trauma. And in my psyche, it was like, there was flowers and he was like trying this masculine, this masculine energy was like trying to show me like the trees and the flowers and the sun. It's so beautiful. And I was just so tired and so crying and so much trauma and like, like, Oh, my body. Ah. And, and he was just like, but look at, I made this flower for you. I'm going to start crying just thinking about it because the energy was just like, it's okay. Like you have arrived, you're safe, you're home. And I understand, like, all the things you've been through, but it's okay now. And I just, like, I actually had, like, my friends told me later, because I had my eyes closed, I was, like, in the spirit world. But I apparently had, like, trauma release. Like, my whole body was shaking, and my hips were shaking a lot, and apparently a lot of women, we, sh- we uh, hold our trauma in our hips. So I was, like, full-on, like, TRE. It's, like, a type of trauma response release shaking (laughs) and I relaxed (sighs) I I took a deep breath I laughed and then like in my psyche because everything it was gray and it was like kind of all everything was turning to dust and when I relaxed and took a deep breath and laughed everything just lit up everything was just beautiful everything was magical again all the colors came back and he and this masculine energy said see I did it all for you all all I needed was for you to appreciate it and to just enjoy I just want to create this so that you can enjoy and I think about that a lot (laughs) like I think about that daily these days this energy that's just like you are the most beautiful thing Brittany and I just want to create a beautiful world so that you could feel safe and whether this is a masculine that I will encounter in my external reality or whether this is just the masculine that is inside of me. It's okay because this energy is always here with me, you know? And it doesn't matter, like, how many feelings I have. He's always there for me. And he always wants to listen and he's not scared of me or my trauma. He's not scared of anything. He's just there, like a mountain. And he's just wanting to create beautiful things for me. <sighs> yeah, so that's that. <laughs> wow, I didn't expect to cry. Um, so it is our job as the feminine to find... I just want to take a deep breath, actually. I want to honor that experience.
it is our um, job as the feminine to find our spark again, whether it's taking D- taking DMT or um, for me going back to going to Japan next week. Um, whatever it is that is your play, whatever it is that is your adventure, you are the main character in your life. You are the one who has to bring the joy and believe that you are worthy of it. And then this will be reflected externally by the masculine and by your, by your whole world. Um, so it is not a man's job to, to, um, process all of this for you but I will say it is very important that the men who are listening to this understand this process and understand that there's going to be certain points where women when they really feel safe with you they want to release this trauma so hardcore and it might come up like this mountain of anger and bitterness and just rage And for you as the masculine to understand this is not directed at you. This is just directed at our lived experience encountering the masculine in this timeline. And also the fact that we are carrying our ancestors in us and who knows what the fuck happened to them, right? So for the men to be, this is where like we really need the men to like show up and be like, hey, I got you. I'm here for you. Like I'm here for the feminine. I'm here not to just play with these little girls who will just go along with whatever I want and serve me from an energetic perspective, but I'm here to serve the feminine because that's where the real juicy stuff is. That's where, that's where the real coming home is because when you do this for the feminine, they can come home into their bodies. And when a woman is in her body, she makes everyone feel at home. She makes everyone feel at home around her, especially the most loved one that helped her feel safe. And wasn't scared of her pain and didn't run away from it. When a masculine can just really stand firm in their energy and allow the feminine storm of emotion to come through and just stay there and be fully in their power as the masculine and present that is that is what will change this world yeah wow i'm feeling really emotional today today is my the anniversary of my friend ella's death she died at wainam a beach here on kopanyang three years ago and I'm going to hike over to Wainam right after this and put some flowers in the sea for her. Um, okay, so... So what ends up happening because men don't want to date <laughs> actually emotionally mature women, uh, they end up dating energetically submissive women, either young women who just like are not fully in their power yet and just are still playing out this dynamic that they're here to serve the masculine or they're dating traumatized women that they can just kind of push around I don't know how else to say that in a positive way but like a traumatized woman is not in her full power (coughs) and Because I have experienced both of these things, it's just so interesting because there's parts of my psyche that show up and I am this wise, mature high priestess that understands what's happening and I can sense everything in the timeline and I understand intuitively what needs to happen next in my relationship, in my life, blah, blah, blah. And (coughs) then there's this other part of me that is this traumatized girl and that part of me is like, I would say 80% healed 70% 70% heal. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know why I put a percentage on it. I was talking to my uh, shaman lady that I, I work with here on the island and learn energy work from. And she was saying I'm two thirds of the way there. <laughs> I'm like, great. One third more to go. But I'm here for all of it, you know. Um, but 
so the reason why I'm saying that is because I have, I have dated men where I have been both like one woman and then the other woman. Like I've dated men where I have been the traumatized girl in like emotionally and they just took care of me. Uh, but I went along with whatever they wanted. I stopped working. I just kind of was submissive. And then I've also had the other dynamic where I've dated men where I'm the wise woman and I make more money than them and I kind of just take care of them emotionally and, you know, financially and, you know, like, just like, but then I get really resentful <laughs> and, uh, or just tired of having to take care of someone else when I'm actually just trying to heal myself or just play like some of the, a lot of these men that I end up, that I've dated in the past where I'm the the high priestess archetype it just becomes where I'm like I don't want to do this anymore like it's not my job to teach you all of these emotional tools it was fun in the beginning but like this is not my job <laughs> you know like and they don't what the reason why I'm saying that is because if it's all happening subconsciously they don't realize how much they're getting out of me emotionally and how much I'm hosting them until we break up and then they date someone else and they realize, oh, <laughs> or they're just alone and they're not able to, to like have my checking in with them all the time. And yeah, it's just interesting because with Faraday and I, we have, I have experienced both sides of those with, within myself, like the wise woman, the high priestess, and also the traumatized girl. And <laughs> I feel that in the dynamic, I've been able to look at a lot of it and a lot of it, like very deep stuff has come to the surface and it's all a process. And that's all we can do is ask ourselves, like, am I still growing? Am I still, do I feel safe here? Do I feel hosted? Is this fun? It should always be fun. At least it should be like, you should be laughing more than you're crying in your, in your dynamic with your partner. If you're not, then something needs to shift. Maybe create some space, maybe like take a break, like, you know, because it should be fun. That's that's the thing I really want to say about that. Um But what I I want to finish this on on this note. There's so many more podcasts I'm gonna make about this, but I'm really excited to go to Wynam. Um I wanna finish this on this note that both men and women, the masculine and the feminine, both of them need to do their individual work and heal themselves internally. If everyone just slowed down and took a deep breath and chose to be really brave and face all of these shadows, all of these subconscious things, all of these splits in our psyche that have like, you know, run away from us, and brought everything back home and healed our trauma, then most of what I've talked about in this episode will be solved if we all did our internal work. But of course, we also as a collective need to be able to face each other and heal this together. And that is that is the work that I'm here for. I am not here to shame men. I'm not here to, to you know disempower anyone I'm here to be like let's move in a positive direction let's go that way and also with women it's it's very interesting because we can it's so easy as a woman to get into the victim mode or the bitter mode like I'm a victim everything bad happens men are like I'm unsafe I'm unsafe I'm unsafe but if you keep believing that then you're just going to keep creating that and if you keep, if you're the bitter, resentful woman where you're like, there's no good men out there, you know, I hate men, they're bad, then that's also the reality you're, you're going to. So it's like, we have to be very careful on where we put our energy and be very conscious of the words we speak, especially with our close friends, because those are like where our heart is really coming out and look at them and like choose your words wisely because your words are spells and they create your reality. So even when I'm talking about this stuff with my friends, I speak in a way where I'm like, I would love more of this. I would love to see more of this in my life instead of, I hate this. I can't believe that I've seen that this guy did this thing. It's so annoying. And of course you can explain the situation, but the point is, is like, where are you focusing your energy? 
Are you focusing your energy to create a better world? Or are you focusing your energy to complain and to sit and to stew in this darkness? I'm here to like move, like face the darkness, move through it in a way that is empowering me and giving me more fucking power and then go somewhere more beautiful and positive, create something new, create heaven on earth here, the vibration of paradise on earth. This is what I'm here for. Okay, so that was a lot. (laughs) I did not expect to cry. Uh, I'm sending you all lots of love. I'm going to Japan on Tuesday for two weeks and probably by the time this episode comes out I'll be in Japan but um, I still am doing human design readings and I invite you to book those because they're so fun for me and everyone who receives them and very life changing for everyone involved Um, and I invite you guys to have and ladies to have this experience you can um, go on my Instagram and it's on there or you can message me for the link to book and all the information (sighs) I invite you to take lots of deep breaths and just know we're doing great just by listening to this episode you have done some shadow work just by allowing your conscious personality to consider these topics you are bringing the unconscious into the conscious and now you get to have the opportunity to leave this episode and ponder it and think about it and choose what do you want to believe. Okay, Brittany Vaughn signing off. Sending you all lots of love. Bye.